What would a smart bird feeder look like if you strapped a security camera inside of bird feeder housing? Well, you'd have the NetView Birdify Feeder Pro. Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the NetView Birdify Bird Feeder Pro. That Pro is because there are certain accessories that are included in the box with this particular bird feeder that you can get as the add-ons, should you wish to just purchase the bird feeder itself and then add the things that we'll be talking about later on to enhance your bird feeder. I will let you know when something that I talk about is part of the pro version versus the base version. I would like to mention that NetView did reach out to me and provide me with the Birdify Feeder Pro for the purposes of doing a review. With that out of the way, let's take a look at what we have here. Overall, you have IP65 weather rating, and when we're talking about the dimensions of Bird Feeder itself, you can see it is fairly large and doesn't really fit in my reviewing room, even with the camera pulled back all the way. But we are looking at 14.2 inches high with a width of 11.1, .1 and a depth of 7.4. The housing itself is plastic. You can see you've got clear plastic up front. You have the dish right here, which is slotted so that snow or rain can pass through that and not dampen the bird seed that's in there. If we come along to the side, you can kind of see that plastic front that I was talking about. That is where your bird seed goes. And then you have a swiveling camera module right there, which we will talk about. The biggest thing that I'm kind of keeping out of range here is, is the top to this. And the reason that I like this design is that one, it covers the bird seed area. So I'm gonna cover birds on the porch there. But if we come around to the back, there's actually a little lip. And if we simply depress that tab, the lid falls forward. Yes, it will block the camera view, so don't leave it like this. But then you have access to the feed load in the back. And of other bird feeders that I've tried, I like this design because it's very simple and you have this large, wide open mouth. The seed capacity for this is 1.5 liters or 50 ounces, you can get a lot of feed in there. And depending on how hungry your birds are, that could last you a while or it could disappear in an instant like I had when I first put this up. We're gonna close the lid and come to the back of the bird feeder itself. This is another thing that I greatly appreciate. This is an antenna because that camera module built into the bird feeder itself. It is not removable, but because of that, you have extra things that you can do, like a wired antenna, which helps with placement of this, allowing you to put it further out in your yard where other smart devices might not be able to go. There is a charging port right down here that is USB-C, so there's a couple ways that you can actually charge this. You could take the feeder down, bring it into the house, plug it in, or you can get yourself a long cable, and if you're close enough to an electrical outlet outside, you can plug it in there. Or if you've got battery pack for charging your cell phone, you can simply put the cord in there, plug one of those in and the feeder remains in place. Or there is the optional solar panel, which we'll talk about a little later, but does come part of the pro version of the Birdify bird feeder here. I do like the fact that the weather stripping for that is nice and substantial, but easy enough to get out without having any issues. There's a nice channel lip around that, that the plug itself situates into. Coming around to the front, this is the standard perch that comes with the bird feeder. It is interchangeable with the pro version simply by unscrewing that and slipping out and slipping in the new one. As we work our way up the bird feeder itself, here, as I mentioned before, nice clear plastic, but I want you to notice something. I'm going to press on this plastic and notice that there is no flexing whatsoever. That is a strong plastic front. Some of you might have seen others that uh, if you press on the front, it flexes a little bit. Not so with the net view here. Also, I appreciate the fact that it is see-through so that you can keep an eye on your seed. One down can't keep an eye on it from the back, so just make sure that you have this place where you can keep an eye on it. But one of the big differences between this and other smart bird feeders is right here. This is our camera module. The camera itself is a 1080 full HD camera module. However, because this is battery powered, unless you use one of those extra peripherals, it is a PIR based camera. That means that it will hibernate itself or sleep itself and then needs both heat and motion to trigger it. This large thing here, this is your PIR sensor. This down here, this little thing is actually your camera. I say little because normally the placement of these is reversed, but the beauty of having the camera down here is that we can tilt it really forward so that we can see all of the bird activity that happens in the seed here. Over here to the right, this is an LED light that you have so that you can either keep an eye on the birds or 
flash and scare away people. We'll talk about that a little later. Right there, that is an LED status light, letting you know when the camera is being triggered or people are viewing it. And then right there, a little hard to see, is a microphone. There also are IR lights built into the PIR sensor up here. This little camera module packs a lot of punch for its relative size. Not only does it give you full HD 1080 video, you also have eight times digital zoom. And if you don't want to pay for the NetView cloud service, they do give you a little storage for free. If we move this to the top, there is a rubber, rubber gasket right here. And if we pop that off, and remove the lid for easier viewing. You can see right here, this is another USB charge just for the camera itself. There is a micro SD card slot there and a pairing slash reset button. The camera itself can handle a micro USB card that is between 16 and 128 gigs, which is great. The camera battery itself has a 5200 milliamp battery. So even if you don't have the solar or have it plugged in for charging, you are going to get quite a bit of use out of this before you actually do have to charge it. Around the back, and very difficult to see right there at the bottom, there actually is a speaker also built into this camera because you can have two-way audio. Because I said, this is a security camera built for keeping track of birds. There's a lot that you can do. Speaking of birds, AI software is able to identify currently 6,000 unique bird species, which is no small feat. Now, I have mentioned some of the extras that came in the box with the NetView Birdify bird feeder. Why don't we take a moment to take a look at some of the things that you get with this. The important part that you get with the Pro version, and again, is an accessory that you can get elsewhere, is this solar panel and a very generous USB-C connector cable off of the solar panel. You'll also see this little weird corkscrew thing. Well, when I was first unboxing this, I didn't know what this was. This is a malleable rubberized mounting solution so that you can actually place your solar panel where you get the most solar energy to power your camera. This I thought was actually really genius. Separating it from the body of the birdhouse allows you to place this where you can get the best sun, which can change depending on the time of year. Next thing that Birdify does well is give you lots, and I mean lots of mounting options. They're all gonna utilize this mounting plate, which attaches itself to the bottom of the bird feeder. But right here, you can already see part of one of the options for mounting. These will get you a connection to a thin shepherd's hook. But if you have something a little fatter, well, you also get larger options right there, but that's not all. You also get a mounting template, Velcro strap for placing, a bag of tricks, which pretty much has every other mounting solution that you would need from plates to screws to anchors to cableage, as well as charging accessories in there. And lock that around a shepherd's hook or a small tree and you can keep your squirrels away. Everything that you saw minus the charging panel is part of the Birdify Bird Feeder. The solar panel is part of the Pro version. The other part of the Pro version is the Pro Perch. It gives you more room to work with and lots of accoutrement that you could throw on aid in feeding your birds, such as your hummingbird attachment, suet, ball attachment, stab a piece of fruit attachment right there, and then they call these jam cups. I don't have any birds that really utilize jam where I live, uh, so I didn't put those in when I was testing. And then you've got a vanity plate right there, which is a sticker that you can adhere to the plastic bit here. Uh, I will recommend if you actually care, you might want to use a Sharpie. I just used a ballpoint pen. It lasted pretty good, but it's not really visible on camera, which is what I was hoping for. You know, a little shameless plug for my channel when I show you the video footage from this later. I did test this for quite a while to see if birds would mind all the stuff that's on here. So I tested it with the regular perch that came with it and the Pro Perch. And what I could say with the Pro Perch having all the accessories on, I did notice that some of the larger birds did stay away. And I think what you'd probably be better off doing is picking things that work better for your area. I like that they give you all of them and that you have room for all of them. But pick what is important to the birds in your area. Each of these just connects via a little hole in the perch itself and it just slips in. So you can have some discretion as to where things go. Pro Perch is an accessory that you can get or comes with the Pro Feeder. Now, I did mention that this is pretty much a security camera put into a bird feeder. That means that it's a smart device. That means that there is a setup process. And because it's a bird feeder, that also means there's a little assembly that's required. So let's take a look at what the assembly and setup process was like for the Birdify bird feeder. Step one of setup of this is actually like putting it together. So 
First is attaching this to the bottom of the bird feeder itself. It is adjustable. So once it's locked into place, there's a little piece right here that slips in and locks in. That is step one. And then we can also kind of use that to lie this on its back to do step two, which is to put our little perch in place. And then make sure the cutout portion faces up. And then we go into our bag of tricks and pick up the little screw washer right here. And we'll just tighten that down like so and place that down here. And then we have, which if you notice, there's the lid lock right there and on the back. So when we're putting this in place right there, there's two little cutouts there and there. We simply place them there and then rotate back. And there you go, you hear that lock. That's the little lock mechanism right there. That is assembly of this. The next step is actually setting up the application to talk to the camera there. But if you need to, you will have to charge it. There is the little charging portion right there. And after that is mounting, depending on how you plan to do that. I showed you there's lots of different mounting options. All right, we're gonna move on to setup. After downloading and creating an account with NetView, we're going to select add and we're gonna go birdify we're doing this bird feeder and we can add a friend's camera or we can add our own camera so we're gonna say add our own and it is walking us through what we should be doing all right so what we need to do and it's gonna be a little tricky so i'm going to remove the lid for this portion we are supposed to tilt the camera forward and press and hold until it emits a tip sound which is a little odd but we're gonna press and hold i'm going to assume that is the tip noise. Uh, I'm going to select I heard it and move on. Confirm whether I'm hearing it. I am hearing it. Next. All right, so now it's asking me to set up the Wi-Fi network and we're just gonna do that off camera. And it has generated a QR code, which I need to scan with this. So it's gonna be tricky. Oh, sounds like it did it. I heard a beep but it's not telling me to progress. So we're gonna try again. Connection succeeded. And now it is walking through the Wi-Fi setup. Initializing camera, all done. Wi-Fi signal strength is strong. We're gonna say next. Uh, we're just gonna leave it with uh, that name, but we can choose a location. I can add a different location if I want. We are going to say garden and done. Upgraded process. All right, as imagined, there is a firmware update. So we'll just let that run. And once the firmware is up to date, you have access to the newbie app. And right here, you can kind of see in real time how quick that is to respond. So that's pretty good, actually. We're just gonna aim that down a little more. And there we go. As you saw there, might be a little more involved than you've had experience with setting up a bird feeder. But as far as smart bird feeders go, that setup process was not terrible at all. While we're talking about the camera and bird feeder itself, operating temperatures, well, I've had this up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% humidity. This thing has been drenched. And I'm gonna say, the top of this, the roof, that I took off has kept this remarkably dry. I have found that birds actually use the perch here and don't sit in this as much as they have with other bird feeders that I've tried. So I like that, it's good. Because this is a connected device, that means that you are going to be connecting your antenna back here over Wi-Fi. And the bird feeder itself uses 2.4 gigahertz. So that is going to be your longer range, slower speed. However, I will say, even with 2.4 gigahertz, you are going to get crystal clear video from this. I mean, amazing video. The connectivity, because of the antenna, allows you to have even further range from your house, even if you don't have a great Wi-Fi access point. As I mentioned, because this is a smart device, that means it has an application. Because even if the bird feeder itself and camera module are smart, how easy it is to use the application that go with it can make or break a device. So let's take a look at the application for the NetView Birdify feeder. This is the application for the NetView Birdify feeder. Here we can see my bird feeder right here at the top. There are several icons along the bottom. Starting off with the right icon, that is a quick way to access our settings right from the homepage of the application. Next to that, you see a bell with a red icon on it. That is the notifications area letting you know, hey, there's something that you need to go and look at right now. And then here we have what looks like a rewind button. And if we select that, I'm going to start with that one so you can see what it actually does. Here it brings you to a timeline 
of events, allowing you to move to a specific event and then having it play for you. And then once your timeline is done, you can bring it all the way to live stream right there by selecting live stream. We can also zoom in on the timeline in case there's multiple events in a short window. So there we go, it's loading up. And in the upper left-hand corner, there is a date. If we select this, we can choose any one of the blackened dates, letting us know, hey, we can go back and grab some information from that date. Also, you'll have unseen notifications with the little dot under the specific date icon. We're gonna select back and come back to our main homepage here. From here, I'm going to select our notifications icon because that's primarily what you're getting this for. You wanna be notified and have that AI assist help with bird information. Well, here we can see this is from today. Right now, that is not actually a bird. That is somebody walking in my backyard. So if I select that, it loads up the clip and it's letting you know this was a motion clip and that is actually me walking through my backyard. So you could see, even though you're mainly getting this as a bird feeder or bird monitoring device, you can actually use it as a home security device and the angle of the camera can be changed. Right now I have it for 100% show me as much bird activity as possible, but you could tilt this forward a little more and get more of my backyard there. On this screen, we have the ability to toggle the volume right here, mute it and turn it off. We have the ability to set full screen mode, allowing me to see everything. I can download this clip right there by pressing that. And I can also share this clip right there and it'll bring up any apps that allow you to share. I'm gonna select back and we're going to find one that actually is an AI event. So here we go. These are just motion triggers. Here's an AI trigger. Selecting that, we'll open it up and hey, there's a bird. You'll notice that it is rather short because the bird kind of kind of ducks out of view. But if we notice right here, there's a new button. It says show AI pick. So if I do that, it will identify this bird. So it's saying this is a house finch. There's several different options. Well, here we could see it changes from being a house finch to a house sparrow to a pine siskin. I'm saying that horribly wrong. And that's all based on the AI. So it's not going to be 100%. However, if we come back to the house finch and I select it, it's going to give you Wikipedia information about that house finch. Maybe this house sparrow. Again, Wikipedia information about that. And then our last bird that it thinks it is, Wikipedia. So you can actually use this as a way of proofing the information that you're getting from the AI. So we're gonna come down to another AI event. We'll select that just so we can see. It loads up. Notice this is a 20 second clip right there. And if I do the AI, house finch, house finch, house finch. So this one, besides a house finch, it could be a purple finch. So this one is a little more clear and that's based on the angle that the camera sees. So if the bird's really close, hey, it gets a lot of angles. You can see the bird's checking things out. It will give the AI a chance to do what it's supposed to do. It'll give it more opportunity. From here, under my notifications area, in the upper right-hand corner, there is an edit icon, which will allow me to toggle and delete, where I can delete everything without tapping little buttons, or I could select delete selected simply by tapping. I can come up here and select cancel and then come back to my devices. Now, all of those clips are saved on my device locally. There is a micro SD card in the camera itself and that's where they're being stored. Before we get into the options for the camera, we're gonna select the camera itself to show you what it can do. Right here you can see this is a snapshot of the last time I viewed my camera. So it was dark, I was checking it out in a rainstorm. So we're gonna click on that. It is going to connect to the camera and we'll give that a moment to load up. And while it's doing that, you'll notice right here we've got the name of my camera, which can be changed. You can see the battery status right there as well as we have a share option right there and our settings so that's supposed to be a sprocket icon the three dots is another way that you can access your camera settings area which we'll get to in a moment right here on the screen you can see it shows time and date as well as that this is live I can toggle the sound on and off from here I can make an audible alarm <laughs> You have the ability to turn on spotlights for the camera itself. Let's say you don't want to rely on the IR mode at night. You could simply come in here and toggle on the white light. Once you do that, the light indicator will look thusly. And because this is in the daytime, it's a little tricky to see that that light is actually on. But trust me, that's what that's for. You'll notice you can press, which will allow you to talk through the camera. What I want you to notice is not here is any semblance of a record button or photo snapshot. You're only going to be able to view the camera live. You can change the view so that you get more of it taking up space on your phone. And then from here, you have access to 
a snapshot and it's saved to the album and then takes a while to go away. A little on the annoying side, but we come back and then here there is a record button. So you actually have to bring the app into the full screen mode before you can actually capture what's going on. Now, if you're using this for a bird, that's not a terrible thing. And there it's saved to the photo album. If you're using that to keep track of birds, it's not that big a deal. But if you're using this as a surveillance feature, along with bird watching, the fact that it does not have something like a quick launch here or here, I don't understand the design behind that, but uh, just know you have to enlarge and then you get access to those record features. Now, if we come up to our settings, which again can be accessed either from the sprocket icon or the three dots, here we could see the name of my camera, the Wi-Fi status, the status of the device, and the location. Selecting the arrow here will allow us to change the camera name, the location, battery level, well, you can't really do anything there, but it's letting you know it's fully charged. Here we have my Wi-Fi name, the Wi-Fi strength, its location, and then I could select more information, but there's sensitive information in there, so I won't show you that. To the left over here, we have motion detection, which is our motion sensitivity. Selecting this, I have it turned on, but we can also select a range, high, medium, and low, as to how sensitive you would like the motion detection to be. Even at medium, I get most of the birds that come into my bird feeder. Next to that, we have SD card, and this is going to show you along that timeline all the clips that the SD card has. Selecting back, we have our sleep setting coming in here. You have the ability to turn on and off sleep mode. If you turn on sleep mode, it's almost like privacy mode. So the camera will not be view viewable, the alarm won't sound, and the camera is just there, not doing anything. You turn on a schedule and then go into our schedule setting and then add a sleep plan. So you'll be able to select what days of the week and what time the sleep schedule should start, meaning, hey, you want it to go to sleep during the day when you're around and don't necessarily want to be caught on camera, you can do that. Don't necessarily want it going off overnight, you could set that. And I enjoy the flexibility that this camera offers because it is both a bird watching and security device. I'm gonna stress that a lot during this, that it does multiple things. Coming down, we have our firmware info. Selecting that will just let you know, hey, is the firmware of my camera up to date? In my case, it is, so I don't have to do anything. Here we have my SD card management. I have a 32 gig card in there, and you can see three gigs of the 29 usable gigs. If I want, here's a visualization. I can format the card from here, which will erase all the data on it. Would not recommend doing that unless you are first initializing your card in this camera. Coming down, we have our light settings. Selecting this, well, we want the indicator light on the camera. I have that turned off because I just don't want to spook my birds. Here we have our flashlight alarm. This will have the lights on the camera flash when motion is detected. Good for home monitoring and surveillance, not so much with the bird, so I have that off. Here we have our night vision mode. So we have night vision on or off. And then how do we want that? In my case, I currently have the infrared. So using IR lights to see, I can select the white light mode, meaning it will turn on the LEDs when it detects motion. And we have our light sensitivity, high, medium, and low. So you've got a choice of, do you want to see things in black and white with the IR, or do you want to have color. The one problem that I found with the color night vision using the LEDs, because the basket where the food is, is white, that can wash out the camera's view in the distance, depending on how you have the camera angled. Just a FYI. Moving on, we have audio settings, audible alarm. After an alarm siren is turned on, the camera will automatically sound an alert when the motion sensor is triggered. So if there's something that walks in front of this, it will automatically sound the alarm. And then we have camera voice language, plenty to choose from, and then voice volume, low to high. Coming down, we have more. Well, here are more settings. We have net view protect, turning that on. Well, you could see that by purchasing this camera, you get an extended warranty and I have an extended warranty until 2073, which as morbid as it sounds will outlive me. Here we have motion alerts. So I want to get alerted when there's motion. I do. Motion alert filter coming in here. Well, you'll notice I do not have any option to choose some of these other ones because some things require a subscription. There are a lot of things that this camera can do without a subscription, but once you get into alerts for specific AI events, including bird identification, you're not going to be able to do that. Right now, I have all notifications and then I go back and look through my video clip and use the AI detection there to figure out what the bird is. Here we have our cool down timer, constant, send, 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 or one hour in between trigger, and then pin this device to the top. So on the NetView page, because the bird feeder is only a small portion of what NetView offers, if I wanted the bird feeder to always be on top, this is where I would come to do that, and I would turn that option on. Coming down, we have 
Advanced setting, anti-flicker, selecting that. Some countries operate on different Hertz frequencies for LEDs. By enabling anti-flicker and selecting your Hertz range for your region, it will prevent the camera from flickering and make it easier to see. Just know that's what that's for. Installation settings, well, here it's showing me a live view. I can rotate the image, and there we see the image is upside down. I can rotate it back, and then we have our installation guide, and it's gonna walk you through all the steps for installation. I will admit there are a lot of options for installation that NetView gives you with this particular bird feeder camera. And we're not gonna let that load up. We're gonna select back and back and come back to our area here. Down at the bottom, we have the ability for sharing. That's my admin info and then camera share. Selecting that will show a QR code that you can share with somebody else. Keep in mind, they will need their own NetView account in order to share your device. And all the way down here at the bottom is remove camera. And we are going to come back to our front page here because that's everything that we can do with the camera. Now let's quickly go over some of the options of the main NetView app. Upper right hand corner, plus sign, that's how you would add a device to your account. Right here we're on our home page, the cloud icon. Well, this is your plans or offerings from NetView. And in my case, I have one subscription, which is the Birdify recognition system for life. And that is just with the AI when you're looking at clips. That is not the push notification. From here, you can see previous plans and expired plans. So if you're wondering where those are, that's where it is. Here we have the plan. NetView Connect, continuous recording, event recording, AI skills, essential detection, includes human pet animal vehicle, or if you're getting this to identify birds, you want your bird recognition, that's $5 a month. Order detection, indoor detection, and then intelligent notification. And then all the way at the bottom, human detection. So those are all of the services that you can get. Moving on, you have your shopping. So that's gonna let you see, hey, here are all the things that you can get from them. And here you can see, while I'm recording this, we're getting ready to have some sales on this particular camera bird feeder. All the way down here in the right hand side, that little person is going to bring you into your account information. At the top, you'll have your profile picture as well as your email address, which is why it's out of frame. You have coupons, forum, reviewer program, Alexa device skills, FAQ, support, more, and then log out of your overall NetView account. And that was everything that you can do for the NetView Birdify feeder using the NetView app. As you saw, Application is fairly straightforward and user-friendly considering that the bird feeder is only one of many devices that NetView supports. So the fact that they were able to simplify the bird feeder itself, I really like that aspect. You know, in case you're not super tech savvy, but you wanna be able to keep track of your birds. As you saw, not only do you have access to NetView's seven day free cloud storage, you also have the ability for a micro SD card. I really appreciate companies that allow you to have the option of both. Yes, there is the upsell if you wanna have longer storage in the cloud, but if you've got a micro SD card, you really don't have to worry about that. With the setup and application out of the way, the next thing you wanna know, because you're getting the smart bird feeder to look at birds, you wanna see what does the video look like from this? So let's take a look at some video samples of some feathered friends that we got from the NetView here.
after video quality, well, some of you might be using this in a little more of a security-minded capacity. So you're gonna wanna know how is the audio from the camera itself, especially considering the speaker is on the back. Well, let's take a listen to some audio samples from the Nephew Bird Feeder. Audio test coming from the UV Bird Feeder to the camera app itself. Peter Piper picked a package. Sally. Audio test. UV Bird Feeder. Sally sells the channel five and six shorts. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one. As you heard, surprisingly good audio quality for the camera size and placement of the speaker. I was actually really surprised myself at the audio quality that I got from this. I understand that it sounds like I've been singing the praise of this bird feeder because, well, oh, hey, you were given this to review. Yes, that is true. However, as with anything that I review, I always do try and point out some places of criticism. I have a few for the nephew, Birdify Bird Feeder. First, being that the feeding tray itself is actually kind of shallow, and I did find my smaller birds were jumping in there and spreading the food around and having it drop to the floor and emptying the actual container. If this was a little deeper, I think that would help keep the feed in there and keep those smaller birds from knocking things out. Larger birds also seem to avoid the nephew. And I don't know if it's just because it was new or the placement or they had gotten used to some other feeders that I've had around. I've had a couple, as you saw, cardinals actually utilize it, but I also have cat birds, cow birds, a lot of animal birds around me that uh, did not partake of this. And it's not the fault of the nephew, but I'm just pointing that out. For me, my personal experience was larger birds seem to avoid it. The AI Smart for identifying birds was not 100% accurate. That can be updated with software and firmware and is not a limitation of just the nephew. IDing birds in particular is difficult based on coloring, size. You yourself would have a hard time doing that. But I just want you to know, if you're getting this for identifying birds, just realize that it is not 100% accurate. It will be pretty close, but won't get it every time. And that can change in the future. The one thing that I will ding NetView for is having a subscription to get a notification for a specific bird species. I would get notifications for movement, and that was, that was fine for my testing purposes. But if you are looking and waiting for a specific bird that you want to be notified of the fact that you have to pay for a subscription I have mixed feelings about I understand the need for a revenue model but I feel like that could have been wrapped up somewhere because you're getting the bird feeder for the bird notification so what are my final thoughts being the first to market isn't always a good thing Apple has experience doing this letting others lead the way and then coming out with a better product the nephew in my opinion has built upon other smart bird feeders and given customers exactly what they wanted. The flexibility to position the camera to see birds, whether they're out here on the perch, really in the shallow dish here, or having the camera being able to see further out and act as a almost stealthy security camera is a plus in my book. Yes, there is room for improvement still, but a lot of that is software based. So that can be changed over the life of the camera. And the fact that the camera itself is a stealthy little hidden camera that can be used for security, not just bird watching, is why I think Nephew Birdify Bird Feeder is leaps and bounds above the competition. If you're looking for a solid smart bird feeder camera to keep track of your feathered friends and keep an eye on your property at the same time, you can't go wrong with the Nephew Birdify Bird Feeder. Strongly recommend checking it out if you're in the market for a smart bird feeder. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.